Today is the last day of this season, finishing up the reading portions of the Torah. And you don't wanna miss this as we highlight the life of Moses in the final chapters of the book of Deuteronomy. It's so encouraging to see how Moses lived, how he died, and who took over for him, bringing Israel into the land of promise. This is an amazing day. This is the last day of season five, which means that we have been through the Torah five times in five years. So it's a real special day. I feel like it's a culmination of this entire year. And I feel like we're coming into a brand new season. And I'm so glad, uh, Nathan, that we get to do this together. It's really, really cool. But as we reflect, we're going to be going over the final chapter of the book of Deuteronomy today, the death of Moses. Yeah. Uh, but as we reflect on this year's podcast, it's just really, really cool to have sensed the Lord with us as we've shared together oh, and seen him just really come alive in the scriptures. It's been amazing, Scott. First of all, just a privilege to get a chance to do this with you. Yeah. And then a privilege for people that have tuned in, watched, listened. I mean, we're talking through the scriptures, people taking time to really ingest that. I think it honors the Lord. Uh, it's a privilege to get to do it. So it's so, so yeah, great. It's special. And you know, it's, it's interesting. We're culminating uh, the end of the year. And last year, it was kind of like the last week, I'm sorry, on our podcast, it was yep. like the culmination of yes. the feasts, yes. right? The feast, the great in-gathering. Yes. It's really, really remarkable. If, if you didn't catch last week's podcast, I encourage you to tune in as we talk about the Feast of Tabernacle, which was as relevant 3,500 years ago as it will be at the end of the age, according to Zechariah 14. But here, Bro, we are going to be just looking at Deuteronomy uh, 34, the last chapter of the Torah, the death of Moses. Why don't you just kind of lead us in to this uh, to this podcast? Yeah, so we'll we'll talk about the scriptures that were that are getting us into chapter 34 of Deuteronomy, but also the season that we're in. So we've just finished the Feast of Tabernacles, and and as as we're at this portion, it's actually. Uh, the eighth day, which is considered a solemn assembly in Numbers 29, on the eighth day you have no work, a solemn assembly. And over time, that has become a time to celebrate what we're talking about, and that is the Torah, wow. right? It's the completion of the reading cycle. Yeah. And so there's a celebration of Torah, you know? Yes. And um, it's also a picture of reflection over the last two months of the harvest coming in, and now there's a storing up. There's a recognition of all that's been given and provided. Uh, it's a joyous time. We talked about last last week in our episode on Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the most joyous uh, celebration on the calendar. And often at this time, um, Psalm 118 is quoted. I'll read a passage of it for yeah, you. Please. Psalm 118, verse 22 through 26. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Mm. Right? Remember this passage in the New Testament. The Lord has done this, and it's marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us, which is Hosanna. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord from the house of the Lord. Wow. We bless you. This is what is sung and recited <coughs> as they're celebrating the completion of the Torah cycle, as they're celebrating the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. And Yeshua refers to this multiple times. And the term, let us rejoice, is a phrase some people might know, Hava. Nagila. Oh, bro, right? come on. You ever yeah. heard that song before? I've heard it once or twice. <laughs> yep. Uh, let me just tell you a quick story about Hava Nagila. I, I think this will really encourage you who are listening and watching. We were on a boat on the Sea of Galilee, and one of our uh, tourists who came on the trip was having a very, very difficult time because she had felt like um, Israel, um, she, was, she was viewing Israel from a uh, from a perspective that she was receiving from the world, Got it. Um, saying that they were an apartheid state, that they were afflictors, that they were, you know, suppressors, that they were land stealers. And so she was receiving nothing, wow. absolutely nothing wow. uh, from the Torah. And we were on the Sea of Galilee and um, 
if you've ever come to Israel with us, you know that on the Sea of Galilee, we uh, we rejoice yeah. on that boat. Yeah. And um, the guy that was running the boat sticks on Hava Nagila. What does Hava Nagila mean? Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. And he puts on Hava Nagila and we start dancing. And this gal is sitting off to the side with tears coming out of her eyes. Just a few hours mm-hmm. earlier, she was telling me how she couldn't really enjoy this trip because she didn't have a love for Israel and didn't know how to find it. She's weeping and she comes over to me and she says, what is this song? It wasn't even a song from the Bible. I said, it's Hava Nagila. It's sung at most uh, Jewish festivals and it means let us rejoice. Well, she's like, well, rejoice for what? And uh, we told her, Jewish people rejoice because they were without a homeland for 2000 years and God brought them back. We rejoice because he gave He gave them the scriptures. As she's mm. weeping mm. over this song that's not even in mm. the Psalms, mm. her heart gets opened up to the God of scripture and to God's heart for Israel. Let us rejoice. Psalm 18, 118. That's what it says, let us rejoice. Let yep us rejoice. What happens? What happens at the Feast of Tabernacles mm. as there's rejoicing? What happens in God's heart yeah. as there's as they're rejoicing? And that last verse of Psalm 118, mm. would you just read it one more time if you still have it there? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whoa! Okay, so Jesus tells Israel because of their rejection of him, yes. they will not see him again. He will not return until they welcome him back by saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So the one that we talked about last week who said, uh, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me. I am the light of the world. Um, he He will never be thirsty again if he drinks of me. Rivers of living water, um, is the same one that said, you will not see me, Israel, until you say, in Hebrew, Baruch haba Bashem Adonai. Yes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So there's rejoicing yeah. and ultimate rejoicing when Messiah comes back. We have a lot to rejoice yeah. about as we're closing out the, the Torah. There's so much, and that's why there's a celebration, not only on this day, but also just the celebration of the Torah. Yeah. Right? In synagogues, it'll be marched around the room and they'll celebrate yeah. because the reading cycle's been completed and we're preparing to start again, right? Matter of fact, oftentimes they'll read this last portion we're gonna read and they'll read the first verse of Genesis one Mm -hmm. as a reminder, it never ends. We always stay in the scriptures. And and so in this portion here, we're, we're getting to the end of Torah. We're here in Deuteronomy and we've had Moses really prepare and empower Joshua in front of the people to be the one that's gonna lead them into the promised land. Mm -hmm. In previous episodes and portions, we read how uh, Moses, who really in many ways is a representation of the law, brought the people out of bondage up to the land of freedom. Come on, bro. But now Joshua, whose name is Yehoshua, where Yeshua comes from, Mm -hmm. right? That same name root means salvation. He is going to lead them into the promised land. And so we're right here and Moses sings a song. Mm. And he sings a song in 32, and it's basically a, a recounting of all that God has done, and he reminds the people to take these things into their heart. Moses dies on Mount Nebo, and right before he passes, he leaves a blessing for each of the tribes, yes. which is so powerful just to think about, even when you reflect on you know, Shabbat on Friday nights, Um, that the father of the house will proclaim a blessing over all of his children at the table. We see the same principle, because ultimately, Scott, we're all made in God's image and God is a blesser. Mm. So when we bless, when we proclaim blessing, which lots of ways to define blessing, but often it means to speak well of. And when we speak well of and we proclaim a blessing, we're operating, we're looking just like our father when we do that. Moses does that, and now we get to the end of his journey in his life where the Torah is completed. There. Torah is completed, Deuteronomy 34. Yeah. So let's just look at that together. Yeah. A couple of verses, Nathan. Uh, verse one, now Moses went up from the plains to Moab, of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, 
Naphtali, Ephraim, Manasseh, and all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negev, the Valley of Jericho, uh, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. Wow, you know, uh, sobering in a sense, but also beautiful in a sense, because Moses is really a picture, as you rightly said, of, of the individual that could only bring Israel so far. <laughs> he, he, you know, we've talked about this in previous podcasts. He didn't, he didn't enter into Israel because he struck the stone when God said to speak to it. God said, up, oh, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to enter. But somehow it all seems to be in the foreordained plan of God, plan of God as we see Moses equipped, well equipped, to bring them this far. And I'm just thinking about it, you know, that there are seasons, we're beginning a new season uh, next week as we open up the tour again. There are seasons where God uses one and then has another one waiting yeah. to bring them in. And uh, I'm just just reading this. Um, I, it's It's actually, it, it, I could get emotional if I really like thought about it, but what does God say? See that? That's my promise. Yes. I am going to do it. And Moses, at the end of his life, maybe his last day or hour, he hears God say, there it is, Moses. You've been faithful. These guys are about to go in. They couldn't have done it without yes. you. And I'm just... Like when I read about Moses in Hebrews chapter 11, by faith, Moses, by faith, Moses, by faith, Moses. When the Lord looks back on Moses' life, he's not saying, you know, I remember when he struck that rock. He's looking back saying, by faith, by faith, by faith, which is a super encouraging, encouraging thing to me, bro, because many times we blow it. Yeah. And the devil tries to whisper in our, yes. our ear, you think you were a good leader? Yeah. You never should have done this. Or yep. You never should have done that. We, we blow it. Sure. But when God looks, you know, at history, he looks at our faithfulness. Man. And as we talked about last week, as far as the East is from the West, that's how far. He will remember yeah. our sins no more. That when God looks back on us in our weakness as men, we blow it, yeah. but when God looks back, he doesn't remember. And dude, he's got a pretty good memory. Yes. He chooses to not remember. It's different than forgetting, if right. you think about that's it. Right. If you forget something, that's almost like a passive thing. Right. I forgot where I left my right. wallet. Absent-minded, yeah. But when you choose not to remember, it's, an, yeah. it's a volitional act yeah, it's saying, listen. That's true. Listen, Moses. Yes. Yeah. Here's the land and your people will rejoice in it. Scott, think about it. We read in pages what people lived in centuries. Mm -hmm. And we've That's just good. journeyed for a whole year yeah. reading through these five books. Yeah. And we're coming to the last words of the last chapter. Mm -hmm. It's taken us a year to get to this in our reading cycle. Mm. This was a promise given to Abraham. Yes. And centuries are passing yes to see this amazing right and this is the moment and god in his kindness mm. in his kindness he didn't have to let moses see it mm. he didn't have to he already gave him his reasoning for why he's not getting to go in that could have been enough yeah he's already delivered him out of egypt he's already delivered him through the play he came across the red sea it's enough you know um but yet god brings him up on top of a mountain and it's a as we're reading and talking about this, I have a dear friend whose grandfather uh, bought a house on a mountaintop here in North Carolina. And in, for people that don't know, we have a national forest called Pisgah National mm. Forest, mm. right? I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so in Pisgah National Forest, that's where he bought his house and he bought it up on top of a mountain and he named it Mount Nebo. Come on. Because of this chapter. Wow. And just a few years ago, he was a righteous man, loved God, Giles Kirkland was his name. And he, he passed away there on Mount Nebo. Wow. In Pisgah National Forest, 
with uh, just a, a life well lived for the Lord. And we're looking here, and this is the picture of those things. God made a promise. God made a promise. He showed Moses, and now he's getting to see Joshua take them in. Look at verse 9. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because... Moses had laid his hands on him mm. so that the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. I was recently talking to some good friends of mine that are in college campus ministry. Mm. And he was sharing with me about how much there's a desire in the next generation, whether people realize it or not, for the older generation to impart wisdom and comfort to them yeah. so that they can hear from someone that's got a little more gray hair than they do, mm. you have what it takes to speak the blessing. Man, I'll get emotional, man. So yeah. Joshua received because Moses was willing not to focus on, well, I don't get to go in. I don't get to go in. The, I'm the one that brought us on this way, yeah. right? And we could even justify that. Yeah. We could justify Moses in saying, look guys, I'm old. Like I've tried hard. I did this one thing wrong, you know, and now instead he's like, man, how can I empower the next generation? I love it. And Scott, as we come to the end of this Torah cycle, it's my heart for everyone that's watching and listening, man, what can you do to focus on the goodness of the Lord? And I mean, dump it out like a bucket of hot oil, man, all over the next generation that says, you have what it takes. Mm. Take us into the promise, man. Mm. Let's receive it. That's what Moses did for Joshua. And because of that, they go into the promise. I love it. I love it. Bro, there's a, there's three words that jumped out at me that I've never seen before mm. just a minute ago. Uh, it just jumped out at me. Check out verse six of Deuteronomy 34. Well, back up to verse five. Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, verse six, and he buried him. The Lord buried him him. Now, I actually, I have like chills all over me. Like when I think of pallbearers at a funeral today, these are the people who are honoring, you know, the one who has died and they lay them, you know, lay them over the, this hole in the ground. God buried Moses. I don't know if he buried anybody else in scripture. Maybe he did. I can't think of anybody right now. God buried him. Like what, what an ultimate, oh, I mean, <laughs> We invite people to our weddings who we love. Uh, the people who come to our, our funerals are, uh, are the ones who um, really honor our life. Nobody was there but God. Nobody. And nobody knows where he's buried, according to that Even scripture. Even to this day. Even to this day. But God, what an ultimate honor of a life well lived. I, I, I'd just like to conclude um, and honor honor the Torah yeah. by um, just reading about Moses in yeah. Hebrews chapter 11, yeah. verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edith, uh, edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Considering the reproach, reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure, treasures of Egypt, for he, Moses, was looking to the reward. By the way, dude, he saw it. He saw the reward on the last day of his life. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is unseen. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that he who destroyed the firstborn would not touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as though they were passing through dry land and the Egyptians, when they attempted it, were drowned. Wow, Moses, like life well yeah, lived. exactly. Well done, good yes. and faithful servant. What an ending, bro, to this season of podcasts. And uh, why don't you just close us out? Yeah, man, I, I think it's appropriate. We just read the last few verses of the Torah. Let's just read it. Verse yeah. 10, since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all the signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh, to all his officials, to his whole land, for no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Mm -hmm. Life well lived, and we know that was when the Torah was completed. 
So there'd been, never been a man like that. Mm. Oh, but there was one coming. Mm. There was one coming who was known as the greater Moses. Mm. He was known yeah. as the greater Joshua. Yeah. He was That's known, good, and there's so much hope so that not just Israel would come into the promise, mm-hmm. but that everyone who puts their hope in the Lord Most High could receive the promise. So, man, I'm just gonna pray for us, Scott. Is yeah, that okay? Do it. do it, man. Close this out. Yeah, Lord, we just, we celebrate you. We thank you for your faithfulness. And Lord, we honor those before us, God, those that were faithful mm-hmm. to the call, God, and finished well. And even as we're completing the Torah reading portions, God, we just wanna mm-hmm. say thank you for your word. Yeah. God, thank you, Father, for your faithfulness to Israel. We would have no Bible to read yeah. if there hadn't been faithful uh, Jewish people through the ages that preserved and protected your word mm-hmm. so that a Gentile like me could have it to read. God, I thank you. I pray, God, that as we finish this, we would all desire to finish well mm-hmm. so that we would honor you with our lives. And we thank you for it. We bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've got water uh, that I'm trying to keep in my eyes. Dude, it's just really, really amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. These podcasts, um, you may be blessed by them, but we are super blessed in doing them together. Nathan, thank you for joining uh, with me in doing this. And thank you for faithfully watching and listening. And we look forward to our brand new season beginning next week when we start all over in Genesis chapter one.